Uh, hello, and welcome to the Middle East Forum Speaker Webinar Series and Podcast. I'm Stacey Roman, and I will be moderating this discussion today. We're pleased to have Mickey Aronson, a Senior Research Fellow at the Jerusalem Institute for Strategy and Security, and former Senior Director for Foreign Policy in Israel's National Security Council, join us to discuss the Taliban victory, implications for Israel. Ms. Aronson will speak for 15 minutes, then open it up for questions. Should you wish to ask a question, please use the Q&A box located at the bottom of your screen to type your question. And with that, I will turn the discussion over to Mickey Aronson. Thank you, Stacy. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, I'm happy to be here, although the topic of the discussion is not that uh, positive, uh, but uh, it is what it is, and we'll deal with it. Um, I would like to refer to the Afghanian issue uh, from an Israeli perspective and also from a Middle Eastern perspective. And I will deal with it in maybe three time frames: uh, past, present, and future. So past, uh, we have, in general, we have comparisons between uh, Kabul and Saigon. I would like to suggest that uh, the Kabul case is much worse because during the, the evacuation of Saigon, there was no social media. So there was no um, uh, reporting in real time right now because there is, the whole world is watching. Uh, we saw the tragedy that happened yesterday. We refer to it as tragedy, but other terror organizations were inspired by the event. Um, today, we can say uh, many define the, the American departure, uh, the procedure of the departure as a failure. It's a repeating failure. Uh, we see it also in the Middle East. We see it in Syria in Libya, in Iraq, and so on. There is a difference between theory and practice. And I don't know how many events this, uh, these events would have to repeat till we understand there's a pattern. Uh, the failure actually is a question of expectations. If the expectations were as they were, to change the DNA of the country, to change the Afghan uh, set of values, like happened in Syria and like happened in Iraq and elsewhere, it could be defined as a failure. You cannot change in 20 years uh, people's DNA. Uh, this is a tribal theocratic society and it will not change over 20 years. What could have been achieved and then it wouldn't have been considered a failure is to maintain a relatively uh, Western-like, I'm saying relatively, lifestyle. For example, while well, girls don't have to marry when they're eight and they can go to schools and study. And this was reached with the presence of 2,500 American soldiers as, uh, as were present in Afghanistan uh, recently. If this uh, was the expectation, this could have been considered a success. But to change the, the Afghan nation definitely turned into a failure. Now, let's talk about the presence. The immediate impact on Israel, we saw yesterday, the, the prime minister of Israel was traveling to Washington for a very high level meeting with President Biden. Uh, there are many expectations in Israel from that meeting. And it was canceled, it was postponed. It is actually happening as we speak. And we were reminded uh, a lesson of modesty because we viewed here from Israel, from Jerusalem, uh, we, we viewed this meeting as a, a summit between major world leaders. And then this tragedy happened and, and Prime Minister Biden was told to wait which is also positive because the whole meeting could have been postponed uh, to another, another visit. Uh, but we were reminded we are not the center of the universe and that the voters of President Biden do not sit in Tel Aviv or in Jerusalem. They are in the United States and what interests them is not necessarily what interests us in Israel. Um, I have to say, I don't know of any, if we're discussing the withdrawal from Afghanistan, I don't know of positive withdrawals. I don't know photogenic withdrawals. There are definitely no happy withdrawals. So in that sense, we could lower our expectations. Um, 
What does happen nowadays at present is a takeover of one of the most radical uh, versions uh, of, of radical regimes. It definitely currently encourages um, similar movements uh, with a message that the US can be, uh, the US and the West in general can be won over. If you wait enough time, if you use force, you can beat the mighty uh, United States. All it takes is patience. And this is the message that terror organizations in the Middle East and beyond are receiving. Now, I completely understand that the US does not want to invest any more blood or treasure in wars abroad. We can ask whether two, the presence of 2,500 soldiers is a war, but that's for the American uh, administration to decide. Uh, we saw it in during uh, President Obama's time, during President Trump's time, and now President Biden. This is not Israel's role to ask America to stay. It is, uh, again, the American administration's decision, and we should not advise it on that. Now, a few, a few words about the future. The thinking that Taliban in the future may change its practices is a victory of hope over reason. Uh, Taliban, the, the Afghanian people know best. The best example is to see the people trying to escape as refugees to Iran. Imagine viewing Iran as the land of freedom. This only stresses how bad the situation in Afghanistan is, and people on the ground know it. Um, there is a complete misunderstanding, I think, in the West and also within the American administration of the, the radical Islamic thinking. A few days ago, uh, the spokesperson for the White House said before Taliban took over the entire country, almost the entire country, said that the Taliban should consider which role it wants to hold in the international community. And this is only a very good demonstration of the misunderstanding of the Taliban's DNA. What role would the Taliban wish to hold in the international community? Which discussions can they have with Western, uh, with Western states? The European Union also called on the Taliban to change its practices or the European Union will enforce uh, sanctions on the Taliban. I don't think the Taliban expected to sign an economic pact with the EU uh, for its uh, drug deals or to discuss uh, maybe cultural exchanges. It is a different DNA. They will not change. Uh, and again, the hope that they will is absurd. The countries that have leverages on them are Iran, are China, are Russia, are Pakistan. Does anybody expect these countries to, to use any leverages in regard to human rights? I think not. Um, Iran, we will have implications uh, when it comes to various aspects uh, when it comes to Iran. Uh, Iran does not have any more a threat of a ground invasion from the East because the U.S. is leaving, the West is leaving. Uh, the U.S. prioritizes uh, China and Russia, for example, but these countries just became much, much more powerful because they are necessary uh, if you want to stabilize the situation on the borders of Afghanistan, again, because they are the ones that will deal openly and directly with Taliban and therefore will have leverages over Taliban. Um, Russia, for example, is being very practical about it. It is holding military drills with uh, Afghanistan's other neighbors, uh, it, with uh, uh, Tajikistan and with Uzbekistan, in order to prevent uh, Afghani, uh, Afghani refugees leaving the country and military disorder. And Iran will have to decide whether it wants to stop uh, the flow of drugs coming from Afghanistan. I want to uh, discuss, I have five more minutes, very briefly, two scenarios, the positive scenario and the realistic scenario. The positive scenario is that states of the Middle East will unite in order to face a common threat of radicalism. Uh, we will have the leaders of Saudi Arabia, of Egypt, and since they are all afraid of the Shia axis and the Sunni Muslim Brotherhood, they will find it very hard to resist 
pressures from Iran and from Turkey separately. They can also act in cooperation with Israel on matters of economy, of defense, uh, of intelligence. And unlike Iran or Turkey, Israel has no expansion uh, uh, fantasies in the Middle Eastern arena. Um, if, uh, if they act separately, if their differences overcome the wish uh, to cooperate, uh, there will be, of course, more chance for, for radical Islam to rise. For Israel, American departure is, of course, problematic. However, Israel never relied on the US uh, to participate in the battlefield, despite the fact that Israel has expectations for economic support for purchasing weapons uh, and international backing from the United States. There is no change in American commitment in that sense. Israel remains the most stable and uh, close ally in the Middle East. Uh, for the United States, uh, the United States can rely on Israel to preserve its interests. And if the United States administration adopts a rational and practical thinking and not uh, extreme progressive ideas, uh, there could be positive cooperation. Uh, there are shared values as opposed to transactional approach. And these are crucial for facing the challenges ahead. This was the positive scenario, but we have the realistic scenario. Realistic scenario is that everybody will hedge their bets. As the Russian ambassador that declared uh, this uh, uh, maritime drill coming uh, in the Persian Gulf, in the participation of China, Russia, and Iran, as he said, he stressed that Iran is warming up towards its neighbors. Uh, the Saudis are having a direct dialogue with Iran. The Emiratis send a representative to the crowning of Raisi. And uh, also the Emirati NSA just visited the visited its considered to be bitter allies, a uh, bitter sorry bitter enemies, uh, Qatar and Turkey. He paid a visit to them uh, in one week. Everybody's hedging their bets. What is the lesson to Israel? The lesson should be very similar uh, to the lesson we learned from the year 2006 when Hamas took over Gaza in democratic elections. We are often told by diplomats and by foreign security experts, we should trust our security with Palestinian security forces that received proper training from US experts. We are told they will block Islamic terror on a day of reckoning. This is not to disregard the importance of moderate Palestinian forces uh, support in the efforts of, uh, of uh, the IDF to, to combat radical Islam every day. But the demise of the 300,000 Afghan security forces is a painful lesson for Israel in this regard. Uh, and we should remember that if ever a serious discussion of a settlement of the conflict between Israel and the Palestinians takes place. US departure will not leave a void. There are no vacuums in the real world. Russia and China and Turkey and others will definitely come in both in Afghanistan and elsewhere. The implication for states' behavior and state choices would be very clear. It is very different if you have an American base on your land or you have a Russian base on your land. Iran and Turkey will have greater opportunity, no doubt, and therefore may, be, uh, may become more aggressive. It seems that the rise of radical Islam is almost inedible, inevitable. Thank you, and I would be very happy to take questions. I have to tell you, in the background, you can see a TV studio. I'm speaking from a TV studio because I was accompanying the visit uh, from here, from Jerusalem, of uh, Prime Minister Bennett, who is currently meeting with President Biden. So you see people walking around. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for, for that expert analysis. Uh, we have quite a few questions coming in from Carrie Hildebrand. Uh, will the Taliban be capable of forming a relatively stable government, or do you see it fracturing into quarreling and far warring factions? The honest answer is I don't know. But judging from the past and judging from its behavior right now, the Taliban currently has a challenge of turning itself from a guerrilla terror organization into a state apparatus. For that purpose, it would need two things, internal stability and some external international interaction. Uh, 
the tragic uh, event that happened yesterday, the terror attack that uh, Daesh, uh, that ISIS claimed responsibility for, was against Taliban interests because Taliban needs the U.S. to leave quickly and quietly. And this could trigger some American uh, action against ISIS. In the, as, as we heard President Biden say, I believe what Taliban would want is to stabilize uh, Afghanistan. Taliban, as opposed to ISIS, has no uh, international inspirations. It has inspirations when it aspirations when it comes to Afghanistan. So Taliban would try to stabilize Afghanistan quietly, not to get into a fight with anybody right now. It would even deal positively with Iran, despite the deep hatred and contempt between Taliban, the Sunnis, and, and Iran, the Shiites. And they will have international cooperation from China. They will have international cooperations from Russia and, of course, from Pakistan and maybe with others from Iran. Turkey, uh, we read uh, that uh, the Taliban approached Turkey uh, to help them in operating the airport. And I believe they will receive some cooperation from, from external uh, powers. So I think they will try to stabilize the country. I don't know if they manage to. Understood. Thank you. From Morton Maurer, the progressive theory is that the reason there is not peace is that we haven't given, given enough incentive to our enemies. When will the idea that the sacrifice of Israel be the final needed gift? Where else will Israel turn for the lost American support? I hope the American support is not lost. And this is very important. Again, we share values and uh, we, sh we have a deep commitment in the US that is based on the understanding that Israel is the single, the most, the, the stronger uh, country that represents American interests in the Middle East. And I believe this will not be lost. Again, uh, America expresses its commitment again and again. I'm waiting to see the result of the meeting between President Biden and Prime Minister Bennett. I think well, it was a very generous gesture from President Biden to receive Prime Minister Bennett during all this mayhem that is happening and all this uh, chaotic departure from Afghanistan. And I believe that Although the U.S. suffers from Middle Eastern fatigue, the Middle East never lets you leave. And if the Middle East doesn't let you leave, the U.S. would need a reliable ally in the area. And this would necessarily have to be Israel. Thank you. From Lev Tristan, uh, is it possible for politicians to learn from history or do they always think they are too smart to fail? I am so fortunate to answer you that not as a politician. Well, politicians have, again, the, the victory of hope over reason or over history. And they have also the limitations of, uh, of the time they serve. It's very hard to plan 10 years in advance if you stay in office for three or four or five years. Or as we had in Israel, we had so many elections taking place almost every half a year. So I do hope they learn from history. Uh, they will be very, I hope, disillusioned about Taliban. Uh, all these declarations, for example, we see about Taliban changing, suddenly becoming uh, more, what would I say, liberal? I wouldn't believe it till I see it. I wouldn't like to be a woman in Afghanistan right now. I think it's a tragedy. And again, the people who know it best are those that are willing to jump on airplanes just to escape that country. Yes, thank you. Uh, from Jay Baksh, sorry, I can't pronounce that. Uh, how does success of Taliban and bold in Hamas and PLA and impact on Israel? I think Hamas was the first terror organization that congratulated uh, Taliban for its victory. Uh, he was joined by a uh, uh, Palestinian uh, Islamic Jihad movement. He was then joined by other radical movements in Syria, for example. They are very much inspired. Um, and again, everybody sees what is happening. And the mighty United States is leaving 
uh, a country after 20 years in the hands of a radical movement uh, with the potential of other even more radical movements like ISIS that have international uh, aspirations. And I think it's very negative and uh, they are all these these uh, terror organizations are are celebrating and uh, we will have to be aware of it and prepare ourselves for that and i believe israel does thank you along those lines jay asks will terror bases form and launch attacks from afghanistan who will i'm sorry can you repeat please just uh, terror bases like will terrorists uh, entrench in afghanistan and start launching attacks do you think? Well, I was asked uh, especially about Al Qaeda, mm -hmm. and I believe Taliban will not clash with Al Qaeda unless Al Qaeda does something like happened yesterday to attract American attention that would destabilize the country. Again, Taliban has an interest to stabilize Afghanistan so it is able to rule it and and to turn from again from a guerrilla to a a state to be able to govern the state. I'm sorry, we have a bad connection here, but I'll continue. I'll continue to speak. And unless Taliban does something very radical that uh, that forces the United States to intervene, uh, Taliban will not clash at the moment with Al Qaeda. It will not clash with anybody. It doesn't have to because it's interested in stabilization and quiet. But we will see how Al Qaeda behaves. Exactly. Uh, so the world leaders seem to be taking a sitting back and wait approach to, to how to deal with the Taliban. How do you think that they should proactively react? Well, I can tell you how, how I would like them to proactively react, but uh, that would be, again, the victory of hope over reason. Uh, we see the countries in the region, we see Tajikistan, Uzbekistan, and, uh, and Turkmenistan that border uh, Afghanistan, they understood a long time ago, I think since even 2018, they have to deal with Taliban because Taliban is not going anywhere. Uh, they understood that Taliban is not negotiating in good faith and the Taliban's uh, aspirations are to reestablish uh, its rule over Afghanistan. They have been dealing with Taliban and uh, they will reach some sort of uh, modus vivendi with it. Uh, I believe other countries too uh, will have to deal with Taliban. For example, and this is, I'm, I'm going to say something very unpopular, but this is true. Uh, America has to choose between two evils, to choose the lesser evil. It has to deal with Taliban or it has to deal with ISIS and Al Qaeda. And if it deals with Taliban, it could at least try and I'm even if, uh, afraid to say to cooperate, maybe to coordinate against Al Qaeda and against ISIS. And we see that happening. And if the United States uh, wouldn't coordinate with Taliban, it wouldn't be able to have uh, all the evacuation taking place because the Taliban controls all the passages until the airport. Uh, the US controls only the airport. So there would have to be some sort of, I'm not saying cooperation, but coordination. And we have, of course, the economic issues. I believe countries unofficially maybe would have to cooperate uh, with, with, uh, with Taliban. I am sure that China and Pakistan and Russia and even Iran would, Taliban, uh, Afghanistan is a very promising land in, ter in terms of uh, natural resources. And the temptation would be too big not to cooperate, unfortunately. Understood. And you spoke of the rational and practical thinking by the U.S. in the positive scenario. What, what would this entail? It would entail choosing the lesser evil. It would entail understanding that the people that rely on U.S. policy in Syria, for example, are Taliban alike. If Assad falls tomorrow, uh, those who will take over will not be a liberal opposition. They will be some sort of Taliban. And I think the US has to draw some lessons from what happened in Afghanistan and what happened in the past in other countries in the Middle East 
to understand that th this region will not turn into a liberal US or Europe alike. It will continue to stay a tribal society, an, an Islamic society, best case, moderate Islam, worst case, radical Islam. And in that sense, the US would have to make some choices. Again, these are very unpleasant choices, but it is what it is in Syria, which is very close to Israel. And therefore, um, again, I'm not from the United Nations. I am from Israel. I see what's happening on our borders. And our choice today is between Assad, and we know what Assad is, we have no illusions, but we know also who the opposition is. And I'm not talking about the opposition that sits in, uh, in the saloons in, in Western capitals. I'm talking about the opposition in Idlib and the opposition that is supported by Turkey. Again, Taliban alike. And if I have to choose between them and Assad, the choice is very clear. And I think the US would have to do the same. And the US would have to choose between suffocating the Assad regime and letting the Iranians increase their, their presence and influence or choosing otherwise. Tough choices. <laughs> From O, is Israel likely to retaliate against any Afghani Taliban aggression uh, the way it does against Iran and Lebanese Hezbollah? Well, we are very fortunate in this case because uh, we are far away from Afghanistan and we have our hands full, believe me. We have Hamas, we have Syria, we have Iran, we have Hezbollah. Luckily, I can say Afghanistan is uh, in the near future an immediate problem of, of others and not ours. And I would really like to stay out of this problem as much as we can of this arena. So in our final few moments here, is there any way to salvage this uh, failed withdrawal on the US's part? Well, again, as I said, I don't think there are photogenic withdrawals. Uh, I don't think there are happy withdrawals. I believe that there's the support by the American people to leave Afghanistan is not something we in Israel can comment about. Uh, I hope as many people as possible would be saved. Uh, I hope the negotiations uh, will take place even uh, with people you would rather not negotiate with, but again, to save as many people as possible and to try and identify leverages, maybe vis-a-vis -vis different countries like Russia, uh, to try and help those miserable people in Afghanistan. Thank you. And before we go, just, I know this is an unpleasant subject. You, you mentioned that right at the start, but you know, what would be the worst case scenario that we could see here? Worst case scenario for Afghanistan is, I think, unbelievable that I say that, is not Talibani control. Uh, worst case scenario would be if it breaks into a country of warlords, and we had it for some time in Syria, and if you get different warlords controlling different parts of Afghanistan, in Afghanistan, killing each other, destabilizing the borders, with Central Asian states and exporting refugees, exporting terror and exporting drugs. This, I'm afraid, would be a far worse scenario than even than having radical Islamic uh, government of Taliban in Afghanistan. Thank you so much for that. And before we go, uh, could you just let us know where we could find some more of your work? Yes, uh, thank you. I'm a senior research fellow in the Jerusalem Institute for Strategy and Security, JISS. Um, also on Twitter, you're all welcome to follow and read. And thank you very much for inviting me. And let's now all join uh, Prime Minister Bennett in his uh, visit with, uh, with President Biden. Yes, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to speak with us. Uh, we really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Goodbye. Okay. And for our viewers, thank you so much for joining us and I hope you have a wonderful day.